Now this is fun! Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play, uh, well, this game has multiple titles, I just call it that train game, uh, on the top of the window, you guys can't see this right now, but it says 3D Ultra Lionel Train Town Deluxe, this says Train Town Lionel American Legend Deluxe, so, pretty similar names, but, you know, whatever, I don't know what I'll put on the video, um, yeah, I already got her. Quiet, everyone. I um, Thank you. I played this game a lot as a kid, and this is really the first time I'm playing it for now. Uh, I played a couple levels, um, but now I'm gonna start from the very beginning. Choose a job from one of the seven job rosters. So Beginners might pretty much how this works. You can lay out tinker uh, jobs, give you the chance okay, to place annoying. buildings and lay down track. Yes, we know. Shut up. Um, so this guy, so um, up here, this tab, I guess. Uh, you can make your own based off of you can make your own track layouts and stuff, which is pretty cool. Tutorial um, jobs teach everyone how to play. Uh, so yeah, tutorials are just uh, well, tutorials. I mean, does get any something like that? And then they increase in difficulty, I believe. Um, I could be wrong. Hobo bouncer jobs aren't too difficult. Just about anyone can have fun with them. If you want a challenge, great fire stoker jobs are not for the the gloves are yeah. off with whip tutorial so, like, jobs goes teach everyone how in to order play. from easiest all the way up to hardest. So we'll start off with the tutorial levels for now. So to start one you just click on it, you can barely see it but it highlights it in red and then you press next. So Welcome start to off with the first one. Train Town. I in know how to play first job, but you'll, you'll learn how to drive anyway. a locomotive, switch tracks, and couple cars. Let's begin. First, select the steam locomotive. Simply click on it. Good. The locomotive appears on the toolbar at the bottom right of the screen. A train can be controlled by either clicking on the throttle or clicking on the left or right of the selected car. The throttle controls a train's speed. The red position stops the train. Clicking on a train will also stop the train. The three green positions move the train to the right. Clicking to the right of a selected car will also move the train to the right. The blue positions move the train left. Clicking left of a selected car will move the train left. A train has three speeds. Both the color and arrows indicate the current speed of a car. The car also has a small speed indicator that changes to reflect its current speed. The red indicates the car has stopped. Now, let's drive the train to the right. Either click on one of the green positions or to the right of the selected car. So I'll probably just have that guy explain the car everything. moves to the right. Now, let's learn how to switch the track. If the train is too close to the switch, it will not operate. However, here the train is properly positioned. Click on the switch. If click. position changes, you may switch it back by clicking on the switch again. Now, click. drive the train click, onto click, the click, second click, rail line. Click, click. I think that's okay. I think it, yeah, it automatically switches that the train's going towards. Switch it. the track so that the locomotive will back down the second rail line. Okay, you're ready to couple two cars. The trick is not to go too fast. Slowly back the train down and couple it to the caboose. Great job. Not too fast. Now, let's uncouple the caboose. Back the train down onto the third line. Stop when the caboose is in the loading zone. Uh, so to navigate the screen, you just uh, go to the sides of it. So you, might, you see the mouse cursor like disappear. That just means I'm off to the side scrolling the screen. Um, so you can have the train go over. If the train's going too fast and it runs into something, it will be a fender bender. Uh, you can change that off in the options, though, if you're young or if you don't really like challenges or whatever. And like I said, this doesn't really matter if the train's backing into it because it'll automatically switch. Okay. Position the cursor between the coal tender and the caboose. 
the indicator will change to an animating couple. Click to uncouple the caboose. The caboose is now uncoupled. To end the job, stop the locomotive in front of the roundhouse. I think at the tutorial levels though, if you hit something, then it will just uh, stop you. And it'll be fine. Congratulations! You did it! You now know how to control a locomotive. You've switched tracks and coupled cars. The next job will teach you how to pick up and deliver. This job teaches you the basics in loads and deliveries. You'll learn how to keep your locomotives fueled and how to pick up and deliver loads. First, select the steam locomotive. This engine needs both water and coal to operate. The coal and water gauges on the toolbar are almost empty. If they ever become completely empty, your train will shut down. First, let's fill up with coal. Drive your train to the coal tipple to the right. Stop the train when it's under the tipple. The coal tipple will automatically fill the train. Good. Now, fill the water the same way. You've successfully fueled your steam locomotive. Keep a close eye on your engine fuel. If you run out, you may have to restart your job. Notice now, the we'll small fruit icon the above the farm. The green square around the icon indicates a load can be picked up. The red stop sign around the same fruit icon indicates a load needs to be delivered. It's your job to pick up loads, then deliver them where they're needed. Drive your train to the farm and stop when the refrigerator car is in the loading zone. Click on the fruit icon to load the refrigerator car with fruit. Now, deliver the fruit by stopping the refrigerator car next to the cannery. Click on the icon to unload oh, the fruit. Crap. Where are going? Oh, crap. Oh, switch one of them. Great! Train Town residents will now be able to buy canned fruit. Next, we're going to learn how to use the map. First, to view the map, click on the map tab on the toolbar. You can see a small blueprint of the entire track. Now, click anywhere on the map area. The game screen centers on where you clicked. To the right of the map are three buttons. The magnifying glass with a plus will zoom in on the map, making it easier to read. The magnifying glass with a minus zooms out. The button with the letter I will toggle the icons on and off. Use it to view the screen without all those cluttering icons. We're almost done with this job. Finally, let's pick up a few passengers. Click on the passenger locomotive. This locomotive is diesel and it's almost out of fuel. Drive the passenger train up to the diesel filling tank. Stop the train when the locomotive is next to the tank. It will automatically refill. Now, pick up some passengers. There is a times two symbol next to the passenger load icon. This means that there are two loads of people who need to be picked up. Stop the train when the first passenger car is next to the depot. Load the passengers by clicking on the passenger icon. You need to pick up this load Shut up. Move the train till the second passenger car lines up with the depot and pick up the second load of people. To finish the job, drive the passenger train off the screen to the right. Oh, to the right? Alright, cool. Bye. Go find on your vacation. That was some mighty fine work. You right, refuel, we'll this, this job teaches uh, you the basics episode. in loads and deliveries. I thought we already did. You learn oh, how to keep your locomotives time. fueled and how to pick up no. and deliver loads. No, I don't want to do First, this. First, select the steam locomotive. Um, this engine needs both water. this job, there we go. <laughs> you can't do that in full screen mode, so I'm playing in uh, window mode. Uh, so now we learn about signals, I guess. Signals are known as semaphores. In this job, you'll be taught what a semaphore is, how it works, and how to place your own signals. Watch the steam locomotive. A collision with a passenger train was averted using a semaphore. 
The flashing red lights mean that a train will stop when it comes near this signal. Now click on the semaphore. The lights will change to blue. When a train approaches a blue signal, it will reverse directions. Click again on the semaphore. The lights will change to green. Green indicates the train can pass by the signal uninterrupted. When the train hits this blue semaphore, it will automatically reverse directions. As the train reverses direction, you'll be able to click on the switch and redirect the train down the new rail line. I will control the train. When the train approaches the blue semaphore, switch the track. Excellent! The, tutorials the are red pretty semaphore simple. stops the locomotive. The first you may also two place your of, own uh, signals. Use the right mouse uh, button to drop a signal near the bumper. Actual levels are pretty easy too, and then they they definitely do start to get harder. What do you say? What do you want me to do? Oh, uh, use the right mouse. These signals okay. work just like semaphores, except <sighs> they're one-shot flags. Once a train uses them, they disappear. Set this signal to blue by clicking on it. Good. It's set exactly the same as permanent semaphores. Place a red signal here. As the train approaches the blue signal, switch the track to conduct the train to the depot. And that's it. Semaphores are used in a variety of situations from railroad crossings that keep automobiles and pedestrians safe to sophisticated loading processes in real-world freight yards. Alright, so we did three, so I think I'll end the episode here. Thank you guys for watching. Please join me in my next episode of whatever I decide to upload tomorrow. Uh, goodbye.